Uh, good evening, everybody. I hope everyone had a good Thanksgiving. Uh, I would like to welcome you uh, uh, on behalf of our uh, Washington Map Society. I'm Jeffrey Katz, the president of the Washington Map Society. But we have our usual co-sponsors, the California, Chicago, New York, Phillips Lee Phillips Society, Rocky Mountain, Texas, as well as ourselves as a partnership to uh, bring this uh, evening's uh, session to you. Um, we are all nonprofits uh, and we all uh, appreciate your support. Um, the Washington Map Society uh, has, uh, we hope you join at least one of us uh, for ourselves, the Washington Map Society has, as you may know, a $25 initial one-year uh, special membership uh, uh, promotion for first-year uh, members. Um, so I hope you'll consider joining. Uh, I'd also like to thank our advertisers who support uh, our um journal, The Portal On, with which I'm sure you're all familiar, uh, as well as uh, the advertisers for the California Map Society, the Calafia, that uh, makes that uh, journal uh, possible as well. Um, I'm going to turn it over in a minute to uh, Ron Grimm, who will do the introduction to our speaker this evening. Uh, before we do so, however, I would like to just the housekeeping reminder uh, to let you know that this is being recorded. Uh, so if that is not comfortable for you, uh, turn off your video uh, uh, so that uh, you won't be identified. And um, of course, as usual, please uh, keep any background sounds uh, uh, to the minimum. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Ron Grimm, who will introduce tonight's speaker and give you a little peek ahead at some of our forthcoming programs. Uh, Ron? Okay, um, in consultation with um, the other MAP societies, I have been working on a schedule for the spring. I have programs, monthly programs lined up pretty much from January through May. Um, uh, the list will soon be published in the portal in, and I will circulate a list of those spring meetings uh, to the program chairs of the other MAP societies. Now, our next meeting is in about two weeks on December 14. Um, it features uh, Francis Manasek, and the title of his talk is The Birth of Moon Maps, Looking through the telescope, 1610 to 1696. Um, Frank um, is a retired professor at Dartmouth, Dartmouth Medical School. He's a former antiquarian map dealer and the author of two books, Collecting Old Maps, and most recently, a treatise on moon maps. Uh, in the talk that he's presenting uh, in two weeks, he will focus on about 15 or 16 maps that were published at the end of the 17th century, those being the first maps uh, derived from using a telescope. I think we will look forward to his interpretation and insights into these particular maps. And now it's my pleasure to introduce this evening's speaker, Thomas Horst, who is joining us from Lisbon, Portugal. And just be aware that it's after midnight there. <laughs> uh, Thomas is a postdoctoral researcher at Lisbon University, where he, where he studies cosmographic knowledge visualized on maps, globes, and texts, as well as transcultural relations in the early modern period. Uh, he has served as um, my uh, co-editor of book reviews in Amaga Mundi. And since I retired, he is also, he's continuing in that role. Uh, he also supplies bibliographic entries uh, to ISIS current bibliography, particularly on the topics of history of cosmography, maps, atlas, globes, globes instruments, and texts. 
Now his presentation tonight is time to coincide with today's 60th anniversary of the restitution of the Bavarian Army Library to Germany. Now, some of you may be asking why here in the United States are we in, should we be interested in this particular topic? Well, as I was thinking about that, I was reminded when I first started working at the Library of Congress, I helped compile the second edition of the World Directory of Map Collections. Interestingly, in that questionnaire, there was one question which most libraries answered rather briefly, something about the history of their collection. And one of the things I remember, particularly for lots of collections in Germany, is that the collections were evacuated or moved out of their buildings during World War II. Well, the story that Thomas is going to tell us tonight uh, involves that same process, but uh, the, that particular collection uh, was brought to the United States and was housed in the Library of Congress for at least 10 years. So um, I will, we can look forward to Thomas uh, telling us more about that story. Um, Thomas has agreed to answer a few questions at the conclusion of his presentation. If you have questions, please type them in the chat feature during or after his presentation. And uh, we will, I will read them and he will answer them. But now I'd like to turn the program over to Thomas and have him explain to us about the Bavarian Army Library. Yes, thank you, Ron, for the kind introduction. I will try to share my screen. Can you see it? Uh, <laughs> yes, but okay, there, that's good. Okay. So, dear ladies and gentlemen, first, I would like to thank the Washington Map Society and all other so societies involved for inviting me to give a virtual paper that, in fact, I am presenting from the coast of Lisbon, Portugal, where it is midnight now. But nevertheless, I am very excited to tell you an amazing and very interesting story that is clo closely related to the Library of Congress and also to a special anniversary that we celebrate today. Exactly 60 years ago, on the afternoon of Friday, says the 30th of uh, November 1962, a somehow mystical collection of 678 boxes with a weight of 169,920 pounds and an underestimated value of 5,000 US dollar that has been sent six weeks earlier from Baltimore on the cargo ship Tübingen to Bremerhaven, Germany arrived. Loaded on 16 trucks, at a caserne of the Bundeswehr to the Wehrbereichsbibliothek 6 in the Dachauer Straße, Dachauer Street 128 in Munich. In fact, this valuable cargo had been announced to librarian Olof Wendt, who you can see here in the photograph, two weeks earlier by teleprinted communication. Thus, it was enough time to organize two lift trucks as well as 10 soldiers to unload the cachet in the library of the Wehrbereichsbibliothek 6, 
a special library of the Bundeswehr founded in 1956 to supply military district six, which is congruent with the free state of Bavaria, which specialized literature. The cargo contained 48 boxes of bound literature, books, fictional and non-fictional that were immediately inspected closely by librarian Wendt. Only a few days later, he confirmed in his letter to Bremerhaven the delivery, but at the same time pointed out that 33 boxes have been damaged so that we do not know how many books are missing. Furthermore, seven boxes showed a shortage of 15%, so in total 40 of circa 680 boxes. Uh, one document tells 678, but this uh, one tells 680 boxes were not complete. So, what was the background of this ominous transport? In the following, I would like to present you the long odyssey of one of the largest collections of early modern war maps in Germany, its dispersion to different institutions, as well as my attempts to reconstruct this Simelia or treasured library of the former Bavarian Army Library, which included a huge book and map collection. The unique library of the Royal Bavarian Army, Königlich Bayerische Armee Bibliothek, was, uh, which was renamed in 1936 as Wehrkreisbücherei 7, contained before World War II around 214,000 books on all subjects, 1,165 manuscripts, more than 426,000 printed, and about 500 manuscript maps with a special focus on old and contemporary military maps. Besides, the Deutsche Heeresbücherei in Berlin Founded in 1919, this library was the second largest military collection in Germany. In the years after the war, where some of the important European map collection had been totally destroyed or partly lost, map historians tried to record these losses of cartographic heritage in a small serious report called With Fire and Sword in the professional journal Imago Mundi. The anonymous author of the first report, which was eventually the journal's founder and editor Leo Beckrow, highlighted in 1947, we shall insert in this section use about destroyed or lost cartographical property, and we thereby may be of help to recover some of it. The author continued confidently, the same may be said of the people, not all have perished, some are just missing. Another report of this series written by map librarian Noah Bert Fischer six years later in volume 10, dealt with the former Prussian State Library and the map collection of the former Bavarian Army Library, whose history since 1936 was summarized. In addition, Fischer stated, the maps which were not put into safety perished in Munich during the bombing raids to, of December 1944 and January 1945. The valuable contents of the safe also perished. The list of these maps is presumably in American possession too. 
insignificant remains of the maps retained in the cellar of the Ame Museum have been preserved. Hitherto, all efforts to recover the maps have been unsuccessful. It has not even been possible to establish their whereabouts. All the maps bear the stamps of the Army Bibliothek and the sign of a coat of arms on the reverse. Before we reconstruct, the unwritten odyssey of this important international map collection after World War II, with the help of archival documents, let us first have a closer look at the quite complex history of this unique library, a history that goes back to the early 19th century. The Royal Bavarian Army Library was founded in Munich at the beginning of the 19th century with a special focus on collecting old and contemporary military maps. Initially, in 1804, the secret war archive, Geheimes Kriegsarchiv, was founded in Munich at the instigation of Johann Nepomuk von Triva, to which all archival records, including maps, from the former court council of war, the Hofkriegsrat, were transferred. The origin of this special army library goes back to this collection that was transferred to the Royal Bavarian War Ministry and reorganized in 1822 into the Hauptkonservatorium der Königlich Bayerischen Armee, where it served as a reference library on military books in Munich. The inventory of this collection was quickly increased by purchase, gifts, and bequests. In 1826, the books and maps of the Statistisch Topographischen Büros as well as the cadet corps were integrated into the collection. A first printed catalog of all existing maps, including globes, sea charts, relief maps, and of course, war maps, was produced by Captain von der Mark in 1832. This catalog lists, for instance, also maps from the North American war of liberation against England in the end of the 18th century. After the death of General Clemens von Raklovich, who was also involved in the Bavarian Ordnance Survey, his library with 3,500 books and more than 500 maps was purchased, as is documented in another published catalog where you can see the title page here. Five years later, the Royal Bavarian Army's holdings were enriched with 2,216 military books from the former library of General Johann Friedrich Ferdinand Graf und Herr zu Pappenheim with very ca characteristic leather bindings. This collection of military literature had been stored for more than 30 years in 11 boxes in his Munich residence until the Bavarian King Ludwig I donated it to the army library. In 1873, Ludwig's younger brother, Prince Karl Theodor Maximilian August von Bayern, conveyed around 4,500 books and 7,500 map sheets to the Bavarian Army Library in his final testament. Most of these tomes had been published after 1820 and were uniformly bound with red covers also. In 1895, by ordinance of the Royal War Ministry, the collection received its official name, Königlich Bayerische Armee Bibliothek. 
Nine years later, the library was relocated to a new building on the east side of Munich's court garden, where it was housed together with the Bavarian War Archive and the Army Museum. However, it is important to know that these three different army units never consolidated, even so they occupied the same monumental structure with its distinctive and imposing cupola. With a height of 32 meters, it was an engineering masterpiece. Around 1909, the library, which was frequented mainly by the, <coughs> by, uh, the soldiers, received a, a gift of approximately 500 volumes from the former Bavarian politician Graf Josef August von Thuring Jettenbach. At that time, the library consisted of more than 100,000 books that were organized in 21 groups and first cataloged in 1930. After World War I, this Munich military collection was administratively united with the Deutsche Heeresbücherei for seven years between 1919 and 1926, but always remained in Munich. Afterwards, it reverted to Bavarian administration. In 1936, the library was renamed Wehrkreisbücherei 7 when it became part of the centralized Third Reich by which time it had nearly 213,800 books, 1,165 manuscripts, more than 426,000 printed map sheets, and about 500 manuscript maps, making it one of the most important military collections in Germany. Starting in 1936, the Wehrkreisbücherei 7 was directed by a specialist in German studies, Dr. Otto Basler, who previously worked at the Deutsche Heeresbücherei in Berlin. In fact, it was this librarian who became concerned about the collection during wartime that contained as a highlight also four 16th century Iberian Portulan charts. In 1941, Basler carefully packed more than 200,000 volumes, including atlases and maps, in 1,500 boxes that were distributed to 14 different safe places, such as personages and castles, outside of Munich, throughout Bavaria, Franconia, and even Salzburg, where the new systematic catalog were stored. Fortunately, all these materials survived the war, including the biggest part of the map collection that was stored in Schloss Kronwinkel on the high ground of the Isar River near Landshut. In secondary literature, it is always mentioned that this corpus of military maps was destroyed during US airstrikes in Munich in the winter of 1944-45. Intensive research in the Bavarian State Archives indicate that this is not true. Basler himself reported in a letter to the Bavarian State Minister of Education, Culture, Science and Arts in June 1946 that all maps, plans, tables and atlases has been secured. He summarized that the whole stock had been rescued with the smallest losses. In addition, Circa 40,000 volumes and maps that remained in the building in Munich 
survived the disastrous air raids of December 17, 1944 and January 7, 1945. Even so, 5,000 books were damaged. But by water, during firefighting efforts after the bombings. This is also documented by contemporary photographs showing the building partly destroyed, but with the monumental cupola only marginally affected. A few days after the war ended in Europe on May 8, 1945, Curator Basler returned to the ruined building and started already planning for the restoration of this collection. In his letter to the Munich Mayor uh, Karl Scharnagel, he worried about the library, which was stored in the lower floor and secured by American guards because strangers sometimes tried to enter the building. Basler also suggested incorporating this army library collection into the Bayerische Staatsbibliothek as most of its stocks was of cultural interest and had been administered and acquired with Bavarian funds. Some weeks later, the American Office of Military Government for Bavaria dissolved the uh, former Heeresbibliothek Munich, lately an instrument of the former Wehrmacht, and directed that the collections and administration of the former Heeresbibliothek be placed under the control of the Bavarian State Library. On December 14, the Secretary of Education and Culture in postwar Bavaria, Franz Fendt, ordered the transfer of all books and maps from the former army library to the Bavarian State Library without any delay. Four days later, uh, Lieutenant Richard J. Jackson from the Chief Governmental Affair Branch confirmed this agreement, which included the transfer of the outsourced stock back to Munich. From the beginning of December 1945, Basler was able to inspect the remaining inventory outside the capital in four trips, where he was joined by a certain Sergeant Walter A. Kaufmann. This most probably was the German-American philosopher. They were happy to find that most of the military corpus was safe. In only a few locations, they discovered that the stock was in disorder. They arrived in mid-December in Berchtesgaden, which during the Nazi era was with Hitler's former mountain uh, residence on Obersalzberg, an outpost of the German Reichskanzlei, the Imperial Chancellery. While inspecting the material, it must have been very painful for them to realize that they had come too late. Two days earlier, American soldiers from Unit 77, uh, 20 art corps, without knowing the value of these documents, had burned 1,165 previous library manuscripts that had survived the war on the town dump. Basler was able to take only remnants of the ashes as proof. Immediately, he made notes of everything but could not give his report in the responsible authorities as Sergeant Kaufmann confiscated these notes. Nevertheless, 
all the other volumes of the outsourced inventories were moved from the military intelligence training center of the third American army to an artillery caserne in Freising in the north of Munich where a water main broke and destroyed a few books. It seems that also certain items were plundered and burned. Even after a trustee of the American army protested in January 1946, Lieutenant Schaffer and Sergeant Kaufmann transported all the boxes away without segregating the non-military pieces as had been decided one month earlier. Nobody was informed where this beauty, including the remaining catalogs, was taken to the United States. When Fischer wrote his 1953 report for Imago Mundi, this remaining collection had disappeared. It was rumored that it came to the War Department in Washington, DC, but in 1960, the general director of the Bavarian Lib State Libraries Dr. Gustav Hoffmann was informed that this large section had in fact been transferred to the Library of Congress. Through an informal contact with a German librarian working in the Library of Congress as chief of the Prints and Photographs Division, Dr. Edgar Breitenbach, Hoffmann learned that this part of the former Bavarian Army Library had been stored in Washington, D.C. for more than a decade in a cellar. Breitenbach was definitely the right contact person, as he had assisted with the restitution of the Stuttgart Wehrkreis Bücherei 5 and later in 1964 in negotiations between the Library of Congress and the Federal Archives of Germany that led to the restitution of confiscated feature and documentary films made between 1932 and 45. There followed a long correspondence between these two librarians and the political steps were taken to proceed the tortuous process of negotiations to restitute this collection. In fact, as we have seen 60 years ago, the restitution to Munich was already completed. But Hoffmann, sitting in the Ludwigstraße, did not know about it. Only uh, a few um, months later, on 7 March 1963, he was informed by the director of the Library of Congress, Quincy Mumford, that the Department of State turned the collection over to the Embassy of the Federal Republic of Germany and that it was shipped to the University of Marburg under the direction of the German military logistic representative USA. This was most astonishing, as even Breitenbach in the Library of Congress did not know about the restitution of the former Wehrkreisbücherei 7. Again, it was unclear where the Bavarian collection was. Hoffmann contacted various librarian colleagues in Germany but got the response that it had arrived neither in Marburg nor in the Stiftung Preußischer Kulturbesitz in Berlin. But during a visit to the new Wehrbereichsbibliothek 6 in Munich, another librarian of the Bavarian State Library, Dr. Eberhard Semrau, incidentally heard on May 9, 1963, that this library had received boxes from the Americans that probably were never opened. On the following day, 
he sent his colleague Aumüller there, as this librarian had formerly worked in the Werkkreisbücherei 7. Because the director of the army library, Olof Wendt, was on holiday, Aumüller only met his assistant, but noticed in Wendt's office a catalog capsule or archive catalogued boxes that he immediately correlated with the former Bavarian army library that he knew himself. On his questioning how these catalogs came to Munich, he re received an elusive reply. Apparently, Wendt's assistant had let it slip earlier, but as neither Semrau nor Aumuller could see the boxes, it was still not certain if the whole collection was really delivered to this institution or only the catalogs. In fact, Wendt was well informed that the Ministry of Defense, which at that time was directed by uh, the Bavarian politician Franz Josef Strauss, had made efforts for the restitution of the library. In a meeting on October the 1st, 1960, Wendt strongly recommended transferring the collection directly to Wehrbereichsbibliothek 6, whose planned new building he claimed was budgeted for more space. We even have a map from him. After its restitution to the Bundeswehr, a political dispute arose between the German state and the free state of Bavaria that was not settled until 1968. To better understand this debate, let us first have a look at what actually happened to the stock that survived the war in the destroyed building in Munich and was never sent to the States. Returning to 1945, we recall that the American military administration in Bavaria ordered that the outsourced stock of the library should be integrated into the Bavarian State Library in Munich. As we have seen, this did not happen. The Bayerische Staatsbibliothek, which was also badly damaged by firebombs, would surely have appreciated compensating their own losses with the remaining parts of the former Wehrkreisbücherei 7, which it had previously taken over on January 8, 1946. But due to shortage of space, the library at first remained in the building's ruins that could still be used for storage. Its former staff, Dr. Basler, his secretary, as well as another employee, became temporary rarely part of the Bavarian State Library. At this time, approximately 40,000 volumes, including 20,000 map sheets and around 500 valu valuable manuscript maps still remained in Munich. We know that this part was reduced by a few maps and atlases of China that were stolen during an armed robbery in June 40, 1946. The remaining collection was housed for nearly two decades as a deposit to the Bavarian State Library until 1953, when it was integrated into the library collection as the building of the Bayerische Staatsbibliothek at that time was still under reconstruction. The building of the former Bavarian Army Library was emptied in May 1959. Around the same time, the idea developed to build a new museum for the collections devoted to the history of the Bavarian Army at its original location together with its former library. For that matter, it was neglected completely 
that both institutions were administered differently, even if they were located in the same central building since 1904, were 1800, uh, were eight, 89 years later, the Bayerische Staatskanzlei Bavarian State Chancellery uh, moved into a reconstructed building still today characterized by its monumental dome. Let us come back to the political dispute about the restituted library that contained roughly around 360 meters of folded maps and six cubic meters of rolled maps that was re removed uh, to a bigger rental property to the Schillerstraße 36. After tough negotiations, the decision was settled with a political agreement that was achieved at the highest level in Bad Godesberg on November 7, 1968. Therein, it was stated that the Free State of Bavaria was the real owner of the library, which spatially stayed in the Wehrbereichsbibliothek 6 as a temporary, temporarily a limited loan so that it could be cataloged there. On January 20, 1969, Dr. Fridolin Dressler from the Bayerische Staatsbibliothek visited the collection and a complete review of its stock was agreed to. At the same time, duplicates were segregated and transferred from the Bavarian State Library to the Werbereichsbibliothek, where they remain today. In March 1972, the former curator, Dr. Basler, visited his library after more than two decades and most probably was very happy to see that the new cataloging had finally started. In the following year, the library was relocated to the area of the Bundeswehr University in Munich, Neubiberg, which was established in 1973. There, the military research library containing around 132,500 printed maps mostly folded map sheets, 180 atlases, and around 5,000 maps in military and historical books was a very good complement to the university teaching program, as well as to the map collection at the Bavarian State Library. In 1981, a total of 10,265 media were on loan. Two years later, a small exhibition with 41 exhibits from the formerly restituted Bavarian Army Library was organized. Unfortunately, the next year, this part of the library was relocated again by the Bavarian government to a provincial army museum in Ingolstadt, Bavaria. This surprising decision was completely unexpected by the librarians in Neubiberg, who did the hard cataloging work for more than a decade. It led, again, to certain political dissonances. Dr. Hans Joachim Genge, who succeeded Olof Wendt as director of the Werbereichsbibliothek 6 in 1981, together with his librarian team and others, including ministers, really tried everything to keep the collection in Munich. Further experts' opinions were obtained and published in the university journal together with an attractive illustration of a gunsmith, which you can see here from one of the books of the library. But all these efforts 
which included also a petition of the library's readers were in vain. In January 1984, this part of the library together with 6,378 old photographs was relocated to the Bavarian Army Museum in Ingolstadt, which since 1969 had held the museum collection on military history in the new castle. The transfer was completely officially completed officially on March 12, 1984. In the following year, it was united with the reference library of the museum in Ingolstadt and again received the name Bayerische Armee Bibliothek, where the entire collection is still stored today. As only the books were inventoried, the only catalogues we have are those made in the 19th century. They show that 90% of the maps were produced in the 19th and early 20th century and were related geographically to Europe and in particular Germany, Bavaria, Austria, Switzerland, but also France. But they also included maps of Russia, the Americas and Asia. Because there is no modern inventory of the restored maps and atlases, we do not know if everything was returned or if some maps are still remain in the United States or somewhere else. This map collection consisting of 26 shelf meters motto, we kraut und rüben, as uh, went noted here, meaning helter skelter or totally disorganized, which can be considered a sleeping beauty, will not be accessible for scholarly research until we have a new catalog. Unfortunately, financial and personal resources are not available and the Bavarian state does not seem to have interest in saving this cultural map heritage. That is why I cannot provide illustrations of the maps in Ingolstadt because none of them have been digitized. On the other hand, the other part of the former army library reserved in the Bavarian State Library was recently catalogued so that these materials are now, 60 years later, easily accessible to the public. A selection of maps, mostly unknown prints and manuscripts dating from the 16th to the 19th centuries, which I rediscovered during my research there, illustrate the wealth of this map collection uh, belonging to the former Bavarian Army Library. To locate and identify these items, older cartobibliographies such as the compilations of 16th century Renaissance maps in German libraries that were examined by the Saxon geographer Walter Ruge between 1902 and 1913 were of importance. His printed reports document some pre-1600 cartographic highlights that he had seen in the Bavarian Army Library. Among them, here uh, you see this is, uh, uh, someone noted uh, this is lost, this map. Uh, the unique copy of the Cusanus map of Central Europe in its third version, which was engraved around 1514 by Hans Burgmeier the Elder. Another map of Central Europe printed by Georg Erlanglinger in Bamberg for the coronation of Charles V in 1530 whereof we only know one further copy in the world in a private collection that I can show here instead of the originally, uh, instead of the original. 
or uh, to give another example, the previously mentioned four Iberian portulans, whereof we only have uh, manuscript copies made by Otto Brogel in 1843. The original Portulan charts were described and reproduced also by the Munich theologian and map historian Dr. Friedrich Kunstmann in his Atlas of American Discoveries published for the centenary of the Bavarian Academy of Sciences in 1859. The Werkkreis Bücherei 7 also preserved a map of Poland and Lithuania made around 1562 by Václav Grodecki. All these cartographic treasures have disappeared since World War II, but until we have a modern inventory of the existing map collection in Ingolstadt, there is still hope that they can be rediscovered there or somewhere else. The 16th century maps that still exist in the Bayerische Staatsbibliothek and have the provenance of the former army collection are the following. A map of Tuscany etched by the Italian cosmographer Hieronymus del Armato in 1558. A map of Palestine published by Wolfgang Meyerbeck the Younger in Leipzig in 1569, including a versified history in the German language up to the year 5434 uh, of the Hebrew calendar. And here you see this inventory number. I will speak about this later. And the single sheet woodcut Deutschland, Germania typus made by Franz Hogenberg in 1576, who published with Georg Braun the famous Atlas Civitatis Orbis Terrarum in 1572. This map of Germany is dedicated to the major burgomaster Konstantin von Lyskirchen. Four years earlier, a mathematicus of Ulm, David Setzlin, has, had started to map all 10 imperial circles of the Holy Roman Empire of the German nation, but only two cartographic masterpieces of this planned opus maps of Swabia and Franconia appeared. In the former Bavarian army library, we find a woodcut map of the imperial circle of Swabia, originally published in 1572, but this version is dated 1579. Another unique treasure is the two-sheet map entitled Neuer und fleißige Abriss der Donauländer that depicts the Habsburg monarchy at the beginning of the 17th century. Its author, Levinus Hulsius, published this map in Nuremberg in 1602. Also, the same copy mentions also the date 1620. Moreover, the title has been misinterpreted, indicating that it was done by an amateur. But on the other hand, it is significant that the coat of arms was drawn by the famous artist Ambrosius Siebmacher, who died in 1611. This map, whereof we know only this copy from the Bavarian Army Library, was probably an appendix to a contemporary book. Most of the maps of the former Bavarian Army Library can be identified easily as they show in general the typical stamps of provenance on the verso of the map and on the recto an old inventory number written on a typical green label in the right corner. There are numerous examples of the letter on printed maps. 
one example highlighted here is the plan of the city of New York in North America so wide in the years 1766 and 67 by the British cartographer, excuse me, Bernhard Ratza, that was acquired for the Bavarian Army Library between 1833 and 48. Moreover, if we examine the old catalog from 1832, we find 13 maps of the American continent listed, mainly from atlases by Hondius, Falk, Seuter, and Roman, and more than 30 maps of the United States some of which are preserved today in the map collection of the Bavarian State Library. But also the Asian continent was represented with printed maps. After examining the approximately 500 manuscript maps that came to the Bavarian State Library after World War II, we see that new discoveries can still be made. This part of the collection starts in the early 17th century and contains mainly military sketches and profiles, fortification, floor plans, citadels and forts, as well as typical war maps that cover geographically the area from Bavaria <laughs> over the Pfalz to Belgium, France, Greece, Italy, Luxembourg, Austria, the Czech Republic and the Netherlands. As we are still analyzing these manuscript maps, including 79 that were purchased later for the Werkreisbücherei 7, I would like to show here only three examples. First, a map of the Chiemsee, the famous lake in Bavaria, where the Bavarian King Ludwig II constructed his Herrenkindle castle in the late 19th century. This south-oriented manuscript map drawn around 1675 documents that at the same place there was previously an Augustine cloister that is pictured in different projections in two inset maps. Of special importance is also an elaborately decorated map of Transylvania that was made by Johann Christoph Müller as a personal copy for the Emperor Joseph I. This colored map is so magnificent and precisely rendered that one might mistake it for a copper engraving. Finally, as a curiosity, I would like to show you an 1897 Ottoman manuscript map depicting Rumelia, the European part of the Ottoman Empire on the Balkan Peninsula. This map with Arab inscriptions is dated according to the Rumi calendar, a specific calendar based on the Julian calendar that was officially used by the Ottoman Empire after Tanzimat and by its successor, the Republic of Turkey until 1926. It was made on the 11th July 1897 by a certain Mustafa Lutfi, but no one knows how this interesting cartographic piece came into the possession of the Bavarian Army Library. With this paper, I hope to have brought some light into the complex history and provenance of the Bavarian Army Library. Also, more than 90% of this unique collection survived World War II in Bavaria, 
parts of the collection went on a post-war odyssey that included 16 years in the Library of Congress in Washington, D.C., and another 21 years in the Wehrbereichsbibliothek 6 in Munich. For individuals and knowledgeable German librarians, such as Otto Basler, Edgar Breitenbach, Gustav Hoffmann, and in particular, Olof Wendt, the struggle concerning this library was really an affair of the heart. They worked hard for many years to preserve this important military collection, which is of high cultural relevance, particularly for Bavarian history. Due to post-war chaos, today this collection is still divided into different institutions and the level of indexing, especially of the map collection, is quite varied. Unfortunately, the maps that were restored to Munich nearly 60 years ago, today it's 60 years, and then transferred to Ingolstadt in 1984, still are not catalogued. On the other hand, one third of the manuscript maps that came to the Bavarian State Library and bear the same provenance are freely available online if you know how to find them. With these maps, we can now start to reconstruct this collection for the identification of these maps. The library stamps on them will be of big help and I would be very interested if some of you have ever seen these stamps in other libraries or somewhere else. If yes, please let me know. I thank you for your attention and also thank especially all institutions that have supported my research. Thank you very much, Thomas. I uh, very much appreciate uh, the illustrations that you had, seeing the various buildings, the institutions, and the individuals involved. It uh, sort of helped me um, uh, picture part of the history of this uh, unique library. Okay, I think there's one question so far. This is from Bob Caro. I'm rather astounded that units of the art core which has been the subject of a recent quite reverent movie, would have burned more than 1,000 manuscripts. Can you provide documentation? Yes, uh, in the archives, it's, uh, the documents clearly say that Kaufmann comes with Basler, they are too late. They uh, go to uh, the place where they were burned and they find the ashes. Uh, Basler still takes some fragments with him. So it seems so not everything was completely burned. Um, the question is, uh, what happened with manuscript maps? If manuscript maps have been in this collection ordered together with manuscripts or not? And the question is, would a soldier or such an art corp uh, burn uh, also maps? Uh, unfortunately, they seem to have burned most of the manuscripts, which they maybe could not read because they were 16th to 18th century scripture. Okay. Um, okay, from Karen Vox. Many years ago, I did an inventory project for the State Library of Berlin's map department. I recollect that the maps did have stamps, so you might contact them. Yes, this, this maybe could be a possibility, but uh, I doubt that uh, any of these maps went to Berlin, but it could be a possibility as uh, not everything from the ship which went to Bremerhaven, went to Munich. OK. 
Okay. Yes. I am not seeing any more questions. Um, okay, Bob Carroll said, thank you, Thomas. Fine presentation. No, another one. I see one. Any clue as to why the maps were destroyed? Um, no, we, we do not know if, if the maps were destroyed. If the maps were together with the manuscripts, uh, they were burned, uh, as the documents say. But as I told uh, before, I doubt that a soldier will burn a Portland chart. Um, I, I think uh, most of the maps we are looking for pro probably are still in Ingolstadt or they are still somewhere in the States or they were stolen, which is also a possibility. Or uh, if you uh, remind my story, there were other uh, occasions where they could uh, not be burnt, but uh, be, have uh, a problem uh, or uh, and a victim of water after um, the air raids. Okay, here's a question from Tim Weiskel. Concerning the Transylvania man's manuscript map and then the Ottoman map in Arabic, do you think there are more maps of that frontier area between Austro-Hungarian Empire and the Ottoman territories exist in the collection? Um, if they are manuscripts, we do not know it as uh, the catalog from 1832, which was then renewed in 1848. So we have a little bit uh, a better catalog. Uh, they only list the printed maps, uh, but uh, uh, we, we know nothing about the provenance of this map. Uh, we uh, can be sure that it was in the Bavarian Army Library as it has had all the typical stamps and survived in uh, the building and then came to the Bavarian State Library. Um, but yeah, uh, most probably this was, Romelia was of interest at that time. So uh, it could be that there were much more such maps in the former collection, but they have not been inventoried. Uh, Francis Manasek. A remarkable odyssey. Thank you for all this. It will be of great utility to future scholars, of great interest too to historians of collections, not only of maps, but of other artifacts. Um, I, I completely agree. Um, when I started all these, uh, my research, I went uh, to the library and uh, asked it for these maps and they were looking in the catalog and they of course did not find anything. And then I went to the secondary literature and the only thing what I found is everything burned in Munich until I started my re research in the archives and then found out what really happened to this collection. Okay, another comment from Tim Weiskel. There was one region, there was one region along the contested Ottoman territories that was named Esclavonia, from which there were many slaves taken during the capture of troops and sent to work on the slave galley galleys in the Eastern Mediterranean. Guess, guess that's a comment. Uh, uh, yeah, I show here again the map. Okay. okay. I, I contacted uh, some, some people who helped me to read this. So uh, if you have any uh, further ideas, please tell me. Okay, uh, Stelter, the Turkish map was written in Arabic script, but the text was in Turkish. Turkey adopted the Latin alphabet in 1928, Lawrence yes. Stelter. Yes, this is what uh, also a Turkish colleague told me. Okay, uh, uh, Francis Manasek again, is there a possible connection between the Ottoman map and the Habsburgs? 
Um, of course, to the Habsburgs, I would expect this in Vienna, but uh, in, not in the Bavarian Army Library, but of course they were also informed what was going on in the end of the 19th century, so um, yeah. Okay. But but this uh, really is uh, an extraordinary map. Uh, we have most of the maps are fortresses, uh, war maps uh, which survived. But uh, you have to know how to find them. In fact, uh, you have to look with the keywords Bavarian Army Library. Uh, and uh, Werkreisbücherei and the old names of the library. Okay, a comment from uh, Emre Demhart. Since Bavarian army units were deployed to the Ottoman Empire in World War I, Palestine, these may have, these may have sent back some Turkish materials to Munich. It could be, yes. Um, Oh boy, we're getting lots of messages here. <laughs> um, let's see, Andrew Addison, Adamson, is there much crossover in material between the Bavarian State Library and the Hessian State Library at Marburg? Um, no, I, I don't think so. And Marburg uh, did not uh, receive uh, any collection of the Bavarian Army Library. Uh, in, in fact, uh, the Bavarian State Library, they had big losses because they really were uh, destroyed and uh, in, the, in the building, what was not outside of Munich, there was especially uh, the, uh, the, war, the war collection uh, or military collection. So they lost nearly all the military collection for uh, that is why they were so interested in the uh, collection of the army library. Okay, Ronald Decker. Uh, did other regions of Germany, such as Saxony and Hamburg, have map collections that survived World War II, or any in Britain or Russia? Um, I have not studied the all uh, the other map collections in Germany. Uh, I know that uh, many of them also burnt. Uh, probably they also were outsourced. I, I do not know. Okay. Okay, I think we've covered most of the questions and considering the hour for you. <laughs> Uh, I'd like to thank you very much for this presentation and uh, uh, for all the audience that has joined us. Uh, generally, I have gifts to give the speakers, which are sort of cartographic uh, souvenirs. But knowing you to be a bibliophile, I have several books I would like to send you. And I hope you don't have them or I'll check with you. But one is the treasures of the Geography and Map Division Library of Congress. And um, another one is an exhibit catalog that I was involved in, uh, German-American uh, migration, uh, which was an exhibit in Dresden. So. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Um, that will, that concludes our program. Uh, if, um, any of you want to just have um, socialize a bit for a few minutes, we can.